while studying ZK Starks, I came across a technique that makes polynomial evaluation and polynomial interpolation fast. This technique is called Fast Fourier Transform. So, starting from this video, I'll explain what Fast Fourier Transform is, followed by some definitions, and then we'll look at the algorithm, go over some examples, and then finally implement the algorithm. So to begin, I'll start with the introduction. Imagine that we have a task to evaluate a polynomial of degree less than n. As a quick review, a polynomial is an equation of the form a0 plus a1 multiplied by x, a2 multiplied by x raised to the power of 2, a3 multiplied by x raised to the power of 3, so on until n minus 1. This is what a polynomial of degree n minus 1 looks like. Now, as a more concrete example, you might have seen the quadratic equation, which will be of the form a0 plus a1 multiplied by x plus a2 multiplied by x squared. This will be a polynomial of degree 2. And as another example, you might have seen a linear equation. This will be a polynomial of degree 1. So let's say that we are given a polynomial of degree less than n. And we are given the task to evaluate this polynomial at n points. If you were to simply evaluate this polynomial at n points, then the runtime will be big O of n squared. To evaluate a single point for this polynomials, there are n operations, and we need to evaluate at n points, so that's n times n, which is n squared. Now here is where the fast Fourier transform comes in. The fast Fourier transform is an algorithm that evaluates a polynomial p of degree less than n with a runtime of O of n times log n. To achieve this O of n log n runtime, we cannot evaluate at any arbitrary n points. With FFT, we can only evaluate a polynomial P at specific points. The specific points that we need to evaluate the polynomial P using FFT are the nth roots of unity. Denote W as the nth primitive root of unity. Then we need to evaluate the polynomial P at W raised to the power of 0, W raised to the power of 1, W raised to the power of 2, and so on, all the way up to n minus 1. Now don't worry if you don't know what the roots of unity or the nth primitive root of unity is. I'll explain this in the next video. All you have to know for now is that to use FFT, you'll need to evaluate the polynomial P at special points, and these special points are the nth roots of unity. I'll make one more note about FFT before moving on to the inverse FFT. When we speak of FFT, the polynomial is evaluated using complex numbers. But the algorithm also works in the context of finite fields. Now the name finite field sounds fancy, or you may not have heard of it before. In our context, when I say finite field, you can think about modular arithmetics. For example, x mod p. Applying FFT in the context of finite fields, they're also called NTT, number theoretic transform. In this video series, I'll give you the definitions, go through the algorithm, and the examples using finite fields. So what you're actually going to learn is NTT. However, the core algorithm is exactly the FFT. So once you know what FFT is and how it works, you also have an understanding of NTT. Finally, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to inverse FFT. Remember that FFT is an algorithm that evaluates a polynomial of degree less than n at n points with a runtime of O of n log n. So you might guess that inverse FFT is an efficient algorithm that does the reverse of FFT. But what is the reverse operation of polynomial evaluation? Well, it turns out that the reverse operation is polynomial interpolation. Polynomial interpolation means that given some evaluation points of a polynomial, we can reconstruct the polynomial. So the inverse f of t will reconstruct the polynomial of degree less than n given evaluation of the polynomial at n roots of unity. The runtime will be the same as f of t. So as a summary, let me draw out the relationship between a polynomial of degree less than n and the evaluation of the polynomial at the nth root of unity. So using FFT, we can evaluate a polynomial at the nth root of unity really fast. Faster than simply evaluating a polynomial at these individual points one at a time. And the inverse FFT, given these evaluation points, we may not know what the original polynomial is, whereas simply given these evaluation points, we can reconstruct the polynomial. We can find out what the polynomial is. So that's the big picture of what FFT does and what the inverse FFT does. So in this video, I use some terms that I have not defined yet. 
for example, what a polynomial is, what the roots of unities are, and furthermore, what the nth primitive root of unity is. So in the next video, I'll explain what these are. See you in the next video.